Hi, this is Tom with The Land of Math. In this video, we're looking at prisms. And specifically, we're looking at how can you find the volume of prisms, like say this triangular prism, or this hexagonal prism right here, or even just a basic, simple rectangular prism. Now, in the video, we're gonna break it down into four different sections. First, we're gonna talk about what are the basics to being a prism. Two, we're gonna give you some examples of some different types of prisms. The third section we're gonna look at is the formula, real basic formula that we use to help us find the volume of prisms. And then finally, we're gonna look at three specific examples, a triangular, a rectangular, and a hexagonal prism where we actually calculate the volume of those prisms. So all that's coming up next on The Land of Math. If we're talking about prisms, it's helpful to know a couple of the things that make up a prism. So it's a three-dimensional object, has two identical parallel bases, like the top and the bottom, usually we think of it, the lateral faces, the sides, are parallelograms, usually rectangles, and it's named after the shape of the base. So let's look at a few of these. So this first one right here is a rectangular prism. And the reason it's a rectangular prism is the base is a rectangle. You can see that the opposite side here is the same as the red base right here. Now what's unique about rectangular prisms is you actually can turn it different ways and have different bases. This one right here, of course, is the triangular prism. Again, you got your two parallel sides that are the same, both triangles, and all the sides are parallelograms, or in this case, rectangles. And our final example of one, this would be a hexagonal prism. So again, you have two parallel sides that are the exact same, these two hexagons, and then all the lateral sides are all rectangles. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the volume of a prism, the formula to get this. So what we're going to do to find the volume is we're going to take the area of the base, whatever your base is, and we're going to multiply that by the height of this prism. Now I like to think of it as the distance between the two bases. So for a rectangular prism, we're going to go width times length times height. So let's go ahead and calculate some of these dimensions. The width is three and one half. If we're looking at the length, you could also think of it as the depth. It's one and three eighths. And then finally, the height is seven and one eighth. So to calculate this, we're gonna take our length and our width, we're gonna multiply those two first. So we'll go ahead and write those numbers down. So we got our one and three eighths, and we're gonna multiply that by the three and one half. So it'd be like our length and our width. And then we're gonna take that times the height of our actual um, box here. So it'd be times seven and one eighth. These first two numbers here, the length and the width, that's actually the area of a rectangle. Now, when you were in elementary school, your teacher probably just said length times width times height, but those first two numbers, they're giving you the area of the base, or in this case, the rectangle. So if you multiply these two mixed numbers together right here, you end up with four and 13 sixteenths. And we would just take that times the height of our uh, macaroni and cheese box here, and we get seven and one eighth. So we multiply the area of the rectangle times the height of the uh, macaroni and cheese box. And when we do that, we're gonna end up with 34 and 37 and 128. So not a real user-friendly um, kind of mixed number here, but you can see how we got that. Volume is always cubed, so that would be inches cubed. So next is the triangular prism. We're gonna go one half times the base times the height and then times the height of the prism. So we got a little bit more here. So we're measuring our dimensions. The base of our triangle is six inches. The height of it, and we're kind of converting some fractions to decimals. We're gonna call it 5.2, and there's a little rounding there. And then we're gonna look at the height of our actual prism. And when we do that, we end up with 6.25, so six and a fourth, if you were doing it as a fraction. So the first thing we have to do is calculate the area of this triangle. So you can think of it as base times height divided by two, or you can think of it as one half times base times height, which is what we're gonna do. So you can see we're writing down the formula, one half times base times height, that's the triangle part of it. Then we're gonna multiply it by the height of the prism or the distance between the bases. So we'll plug in these numbers. Now we know that this is the area of the triangle. So we have our one half, we know that our base was six, so we'll go ahead and just write that on down. So it's one half times six, 
and then we're going to multiply it by the height of the actual triangle, which we said was 5.2. We also know that the height of the whole prism is 5 or 6.2. So we'll put that down here. I'm sorry, 6.25. So now we can go ahead and just kind of start working our way across. So we'll take the 1 half times 6, and then we'll go times 5.2. That part right there is going to be the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is 56.6, and that would be inches squared. And then we would take that um, times the 6.25. Now, it should have just been inches, not inches squared. When we multiply those two together, we end up with 97.5, and that's going to be inches cubed. So next is our hexagonal prism. And the hexagonal prism is basically like two trapezoids put together. So you can see here, here's our hexagonal prism with its uh, base that's the exact same and parallel to it. And just like the other ones, we have to take the area of the base, which is a hexagon in this case, times the height of the prism. Now, we got some dimensions here. You can see how there's two trapezoids making up this hexagon. But the formula that we're using to find the area of one trapezoid is one half times base one plus base two. Those are the two parallel sides of a trapezoid times the height. So we start plugging the numbers in. It's one half times the two bases are three and six. So it's three plus six. And then we're going to multiply that by the height of the trapezoid. Well, it's, it's 5.35, which is the height or the distance there for the whole hexagon. So we cut that in half and we get 2.625. So what we're going to do is just multiply these together. Now we know that 3 plus 6 is 9, so it's 1 half times 9 times 2.625. And we also know that 1 half times 9 is 4.5. So we'll break out our calculator here and go 4.5 times 2.625. And when we do that, we're going to get the area of one of the trapezoids. So in this case right here, the answer is going to be 11. 0.8125 and that would be inches squared. Well, since this is two trapezoids, we would just multiply the area of one trapezoid, just multiply it by two, and that's going to give us the area of the entire hexagon. So we find the area of one trapezoid, double it, and you get the area of the whole hexagon. So you see it's 23.625. So the 23.625 is the area of the base. So a little bit more work than say the rectangle or the triangle. And now we're just going to multiply that base times the height, which is in this case, it's 6.25. So you multiply those two together and we do that. This is going to give us the volume. So the volume of this hexagonal prism is going to be 147 and it's going to be point. 65625 and it's going to be inches and again cubed to the third power and depending on how you round it off you you could have 147.7 and that could be inches cubed that would work just as well well i hope the video was helpful subscribe that would be great give it a thumbs up would be awesome and check us out at thelandofmath.com until next time we'll see you on the land of math